Welcome to Jataka Katha Series 1. Baka Jatakaya Once upon a time, the Bodhisattva came to life in a certain forest haunt as the tree sprite of a tree which stood near a lotus pond. In those days, the water level became very low every summer in this pond, not very big, which is plentifully stopped with fish. Catching sight of these fish, a certain crane said to himself, I must find a way to trick and eat these fish. So he went and sat down in deep thought by the side of the water. Now when the fish caught sight of him, they said, Of what are you thinking, my lord, as you sit there? I am thinking about you, was the reply. And what is your lordship thinking about us? The water in this pool being low and the heat, I was wondering to myself as I sat here, what in the world you fish would do and what are we to do, my lord? The fish asked. Well, if you'll take my advice, I will take you up one by one in my beak and carry you all off to a fine large pool covered with the five varieties of lotuses and there put you down. My lord, said fish, no crane ever took the slightest thought for fish since the world began. Your desire is to eat us one by one. No, I will not eat you while you trust me, said the crane. If you don't take my word that there is such a pond, send one of you to go with me and see for himself. Believing the crane, the fish presented to him a great big fish, who they thought would be a match for the crane, and they said, Here's the one to go with you. The crane took the fish off and put him in the pool and brought him back again and put him in along with the other fish in his old pond. And he held forth to them on the charms of the new pool. After hearing this report, the rest of the fish told the crane, Very good, my lord. Please take us across. First of all, the crane took that big fish again and carried him off to the edge of the pool so that he could see the water but actually alighted in a warren tree which grew on the bank. Dashing the fish down, he pecked it to death, after which he picked him clean and let the bones fall at the foot of the tree. Then back he went and said, I have thrown him in. Who's next? And so he took the fish one by one and ate them all, till at last when he came back he could not find another left. But there was still a crab remaining in the pond. So the crane who wanted to eat him up too said, Mr. Crab, I have taken all those fish away and put them into a fine large pool covered all over with lotuses. Come along, I'll take you too. How will you carry me across? asked the crab. Why, in my beak to be sure, said the crane. Ah, but you might drop me like that, said the crab. I won't go with you. Don't be frightened. I'll keep a tight hold of you all the way. The crab thought to himself, he hasn't put the fish in the pool. But if he would really put me in, that would be capital. If he does not, I'll nip his head off and kill him. So he spoke to the crane. You would never be able to hold me tight enough, friend crane. Whereas we crabs have got an astonishingly tight grip. If I might take hold of your neck with my clothes, I could hold it tight and then would go along with you. Not suspecting that the crab wanted to trick him, the crane agreed. With his claws, the crab gripped hold of the crane's neck and said, Now you can start. 
the crane took him and showed him the pole first and then started off for the tree. The pole lies this way, said the crab, but you are taking me the other way. Of course I am, said the crane. Just you see the heap of bones at the foot of the tree as I ate up all those fish, so I will eat you too. The crab said, it was through their own foolishness that those fish were eaten by you, but I shall not give you the chance of eating me. No, what I shall do is to kill you. You did not see that I was tricking you. If we die, we will both die together. I'll chop your head clean off. And so saying, he gripped the crane's neck with his clothes. With his mouth wide open and tears streaming from his eyes, the crane, trembling for his life, said, Lord, indeed I will not eat you. Spare my life. Well then, just step down to the pole and put me in, said the crab. Then the crane turned back and stepped down as directed to the pole and placed the crab on the mud at the edge of the water. But the crab, before entering the water, nipped off the crane's head. The tree fairy who dwelled in the tree marking this wonderful thing made the whole forest ring with applause. Tithira Jatakaya Once upon a time, there was a big banyan tree in the forest under the Himalaya mountains. Three good friends lived near this banyan tree. They were a quail, a monkey and an elephant. Each of them was quite smart. They treated each other equally. They valued each other's opinions as equal too. Sometimes the three friends get into disagreements. These arguments would go on for a long time. It took them a long time to reach an agreement. They also became less friendly when they argued a lot. After a while, they realized that if they could shorten their disagreements, it would save time. They also realized that shorter disagreements would be good for their friendship too. They decided that it would be helpful to listen to the most valuable opinion first. Then if they agree on that one, they would not have to waste time. They all thought that the most valuable opinion was the one who had the most experience. The oldest among them would have the most experience. They thought they should give the oldest the highest respect. They also thought that if the oldest friend's opinion is clearly wrong, they would need to consider others. Unfortunately, the elephant and the monkey and the quail had no idea which one was the oldest. They did not remember their birthdays or their ages. One day, while they were relaxing in the shade of the big banyan tree, the quail and the monkey asked the elephant, what do you remember of this banyan tree? What was the size of it when you were little? The elephant replied, I remember this tree for a very long time. I used to scratch my belly by rubbing it over the tender shoots on top of the tree. I was just a little baby at that time. Then the monkey said, I used to sit and look at the little seeding banyan tree. I was a very curious baby monkey. Sometimes I used to bend over and nibble its top tender leaves. The monkey and the elephant asked the quail, What do you remember? The quail said, I remember I was looking for food in a nearby forest when I was very young. In that forest, there was a big old banyan tree. It was full of ripe berries. I ate some of those berries. 
The next day I was standing right here and let my droppings fall. The seeds they contained grew up to be this tree. The monkey and the elephant said, Aha, Sir Quell, you must be the oldest. You deserve our respect and honor. From now on, we will pay close attention to your words. Please advise us based on your wisdom and experience and point out our mistakes. When there are disagreements, we will give the highest place to your opinion. Please be honest and adjust. The quail replied, I thank you for your respect and I promise to always do my best to deserve it. The Buddha explained that in a past life. The elephant was the venerable Mughalana, the monkey was the venerable Sariputta, and the wise little quell was I who have become the fully enlightened Buddha. The moral of this story, respect for the wisdom of elders leads to harmony. Peruan Saranai